Okay, so in uh, the master here, so the Haggadah starts on page 86. So Kadesh Orchat Karpas Yachat. So it's really, uh, it's not just here for as a table of contents. It's really something that we should say, the order of the Haggadah. One reason why it's important is because uh, before we were slaves, when you're slaves, you can't make your own agenda. Uh, but because we're free, we're able to uh, to plan things for ourselves and make the agenda. So we have, we say Kaddish Orchatz. We have the 14 steps here for the Seder. I believe Rav Aaron and Rav Yashaber also said that uh, normally when there's a revolution, uh, there's a lot of chaos. The French Revolution, the American Revolution seems there wasn't so much chaos, but the French Revolution, everyone getting, you know, their heads chopped off and stuff, very chaotic, or when... Uh, Sub subjug, subjugated people become free. They they uh they take retribution against their former uh masters. So uh when the Bnei Israel got freed from its rhyme, they did not have this very this disorderly situation. In fact, I, I think Ravarn said in about Shabbos Hagadol that uh the halachos of uh, he called Shabbos Agadol Shabbos of maturity. We know we normally say Agadol is great or big, which it is, but it could also be a Agadol as someone who's mature, not a kid anymore. So uh, the maturity of Bnei Israel in listening to the instructions that Hashem gave that we read uh, two Shabbos ago on Shabbos uh, Parsha Sachodesh, and uh, the very orderly way which we will read on the first day of Pesach of how they had to eat the carbon Pesach uh, with the walking sticks and putting the blood up beforehand. So the very orderly uh, instructions and they kept it. So also this idea of order at time of the revolution. Uh, the main mitzvah, okay, I shouldn't say there's a main mitzvah. I, I've discussed in different years, I think the Kabbalah that Rav Hanan Wasserman said in the name of the girl was that there's 42 mitzvahs. On the Seder night, I think. Um, and then I someone else said in the name of the grub was 64 mitzvot. I think I went over that in or a possibility of that in a different year. Uh Rosh Hamaner, the Evan Melech, he lists 144, but those aren't just Pesach things like uh, when you wash my machronim, he counts that as a mitzvah, uh, things like that, which uh, you know, eating the Yantif meal is simchas Yantif. So I mean, uh he's not wrong, but a lot of not some of them are the Rabbanans, but um, uh, the four cups. So the main mitzvah, I would say, is super. Well, it's 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 not clear. I can't say that. Certainly, the Haggadah is about sipur tzias mitzrayim. Now, every day we have an obligation to rem to remember yitzias mitzrayim briefly, and that's what we say. That's why we always say the third parsha of Shema, because at the end it mentions uh mitzrayim. But on the Pesach night. We have Sipor. It's a much lengthier telling over. It has to include Halal. Uh, it has to include question and answer. It has to include starting with our Maschal Begnus and Messiah B'Shavach, starting with our disgrace and ending with our praise, which there's two opinions in the Gemara. We pass in both ways about that we were physically slaves, we were physically freed. Also that Avram's ancestors worshipped uh, idols, but now we worship Hashem. So those are the two gnosis, and we end with the Shabbat. Um There's important. There's uh, several drashos in the Gemara and Psachim about uh, why is matzah called lechem oni. So a lot of times we translate it as poor man's bread, halach ma'anya, which is I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that's in the middle of eighty-eight. Um, the poor man's bread, or the bread of affliction, whatever. <clears throat> But one of the drashos in uh, that that the port, that the uh, that slaves ate matzah. But one of the drashos in the Haggadah is lachem shaonin olav dvarim harbe. It's the bread about which we recite many things. So uh, Ravarn explained that many uh, rishonim. It doesn't fit with all rishonim, but many rishonim who do not count sipur yitzias mitzrayim, telling over yitzias mitzrayim as its own as one of the six hundred thirteen mitzvos. So Ravarn said because. Uh, Re reciting over the, the story of the Haggadah is done over the matzah, so it's part of the mitzvah of matzah. So it's not, the to say the story over is not its own mitzvah, according to many opinions, only part 
uh, opinions of matzah. So he mentioned, uh, this was in the late 80s, he was mentioning that for Jews stuck behind in the Soviet Union, if they didn't have matzah, uh, they, according to many Rishonim, they wouldn't have a mitzvah of reciting the Haggadah. But also, um, on 98, you don't have to turn there, but on page 98, at the bottom, the very important part, Rabbi Gamliel said, whoever did not say these three things on Pesach, they did not fulfill the obligations, and either they, oops, um, Pesach, Matzah, and Maror, sorry, I forgot about the waiting, to check the waiting room. Um, no problem at all. I forgot, um, I just forgot like what time it was, but I thought, you know, let's see. Sorry. Hey. Hi. I forgot what time it was, um, but I thought, okay, I'll listen. I'm st I'm doing a lot of cleaning right now, but at least I can listen. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so, uh, and the bottom of 98, Rabbi Gamliel says, whoever doesn't, whoever did not say these three things on Pesach did not fulfill their obligation. Pesach matzah maror. So it's a big machlokus yishonim. What don't you... Fulfill. Some Rishonim say you don't fulfill your mitzvah of Haggadah, of Sipur Tzies Mitzrayim. Part of Sipur Tzies Mitzrayim is to say, talk about the Pes the Korn Pesach and the Matz and the Mara. But some Rishonim say, if you don't mention it and discuss it, you don't fulfill the, the mitzvah of Matzah completely. Or you don't fulfill the mitzvah of Mara completely. Obviously, we don't have the Korn Pesach yet. Hopefully, well, uh, we don't have time for, well, the base of should be rebuilt. We don't if the corn pesach could be brought in a state if the majority of Bene Israel are impure are able to bring the corn pesach. So hopefully we could still have a corn pesach this year. There's still enough time. Um but it's some Rishonim say that Pesach Matzamar is part of the, the to say these things is part of the mitzvah of Haggadah, see Puritias Mitraim, telling over of the story of the Exodus, whereas some Rishonim say that, no, you have to discuss it. You don't have a full, a complete fulfillment of matzah or a full, complete fulfillment of maror or a full uh, uh, completion of, of uh, Korm Pesach. Um, I think about a month month ago in the, Gemara, in the Gemara share, I mentioned that I was wondering, according to the Ramban, there's a very famous Ramban at the end of Parsha's bow, says, I'm going to expl explain to you. So this is right after the, the Torah is finishing discussing the mitzvah of Pidjon Bechor. Uh, to redeem the firstborn uh, sons and the firstborn animals, the Ramban says, I'm going to tell you a very uh, important fact. And that is, so many of the mitzvahs are, uh, the purpose of the mitzvahs, even if the Torah doesn't tell you, it's Zech Letzias Mitzrayim, to remember that we went out of Mitzrayim. So the redemption of firstborn animals and uh, and people is because Hashem killed the firstborn in Mitzrayim and he spared our firstborn, Tefillin. Is related to Zechar Tzias Mitzrayim because those that's also talked about in those same sukkim at the end of Parshas Bo. It ends up that Sukkah is also, I mean Sukkah also because Kiba Sukkos or Shaftes Bnei Israel Bo Mitzrayim because you I, you lived in Sukkos when I took you out of Mitzrayim whether that means literal Sukkos or the the clouds of glory is Machlokas Tanaim, but the, I think the the tour mentions that if you don't know why we're sitting in a Sukkah on Sukkos you don't fulfill the mitzvah. So I discussed the possibility about a month or two ago that it, it might be that not just sukkah, but for a lot of these mitzvahs, if you don't understand why you're doing them and that they commemorate something about Mitzrayim, you may not completely fulfill the mitzvah. We know the Torah says it by, we, we know Rabbi Gamliel here on Pesach night. We know the Torah says that about, um, about sukkah. So the, the uh, so the, the first time I found a, so this is before my time, but when the Lubavitcher Rebbe started having tefillin campaigns, Rav Hutner uh, wrote him a letter and was uh, not in favor of him doing tefillin campaigns for non-from people because he says, if you don't understand why you're wearing tefillin, you don't fulfill the mitzvah. So it is a machlokas haposkim. It was before the time of Rav Hutner and, uh, and the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Uh, hmm. But uh, the Archa Shulchan brings down I mean, I think it's Machlo, well, the Prima Gadim and I don't remember exactly uh, originally, but the 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 Archa Shulchan says that when you put on tefillin, you have to have in mind about the greatness of Hashem, and He commanded us to do this, and for for all these reasons. And if you don't, 
have that kavana, you don't really fulfill the mitzvah of tefillin. Mm -hmm. So Rav Huntner uh, took the same approach. He said, you could put tefillin on people. If they don't understand the reason behind it, they don't fulfill the mitzvah of tefillin. So based on the, the, the opinions that, that I just mentioned, it could be that according to the Ramban, for many of these mitzvahs that are zecher letzies mitzrayim, we have to know that they are zecher letzies mitzrayim, sometimes a little bit more exactly why. Uh, now the why for the mitzvahs isn't required, but uh, but we see for Pesach, for some of these reasons, we do have to talk about the why. Hmm. So, Sipur uh, Tzis Mitzrayim is what we're doing. It's not necessarily a mitzvah, according to everyone, because it might just be part of the uh, many, according to many Rishonim, it's just part of the mitzvah of matzah. Because matzah is lechem oni, the bread upon which we we say many things. So the many things we say is the Haggadah and Halal, Halal is also a separate mitzvah, but part we if you don't say halal, it's not you don't fulfill your tzipur tzias mitzrayim either. That's why we say some halal at the end of magid. Um, so, uh, the highlight of tzipur tzias mitzrayim. One point in time, Rav Yashabir uh, gave a share to answer, and he he gave different answers different years. But in one year, he mentioned. That in all four cups we always we we mention Yitzias Mitzrayim, in Kiddush in the first cup we always mention Zech Yitzias Mitzrayim in Kiddush. Obviously, the second cup we recite the whole Sefer Yitzias Mitzrayim. So obviously, the second cup is uh, about is is uh, mentions the uh, Exodus from Egypt. The third cup of wine is benching, and in benching in the second bracha, the bracha of thanks. No delacha. We thank you, Hashem, our God, that you uh, gave us as an inheritance to our forefathers the land of the the desirous, good and wide land. The Al Shotesano Hashem al Kenu Meitzun Tzrayim, and that you took us out, Hashem, our God, from Eretz Mitzrayim, Ufdi Sanu Mi Beis Avadim, and you redeemed us from being slaves. So we mention the Exodus in the third cup also, and then in the fourth cup is Halal. We mentioned uh, also similar things about Hashem taking us out of Mitzrayim in the Halal because in the Hodu, because we it, it, there's regular Halal, which is what we say on Rosh Chodesh and on Yantif and Chol Moed, but the Halal Gadol is Tehillim 135, is it? The Hodus. And in the Hodus, we say as part of the things, Kili Alam Chasto, because Hashem's kindness is forever, that he, Lamaki Mitzrayim Bifchorem, he smote or hit Mitzrayim with their firstborn, by Yotzeinu, he saw Mitocham, he took out Yisrael from among them, with a biyad chazak of Yisrael Nutuyo, with a uh, strong hand and an outstretched arm, legoz yamsuf the arm, he he split the yamsuf into uh, different uh, pathways or lanes, so we mention the exodus in Halal also, also in the Nishmas, which is the other part of Halal Gadol, um, we say, uh, if uh, if our uh, our mouths were as full of song like the sea, and our tongues were were joyfulness like the many waves, and our lips were able to say praises like the width of the heavens, etc., 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 it's not a, we wouldn't be enough to thank you, Hashem, our God, and the God of our forefathers, uh, or our fathers, to bless your name for one of the any of the thousands, millions, billions of good things that you did for our fathers and for us. You redeemed us from Mitzrayim, uh, from, from, uh, from Mitzrayim, and we and you uh, redeemed us from being slaves. So in Halal, we also mention uh, about the Exodus. So at one point, Rav Yashabir said, you have to realize that in every four of, of the four cups, we mention uh, Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. Now, obviously, the only time you have to do it uh, with the uh, the expansive way and the question and answer format and and starting with our denigration and ending with our praise is only in for the second cup. But it's a very uh, interesting perspective that Rav Yashabir said uh, about that. Okay. Um, one of my rabbis from my first year in Israel, Rav Moshe Rosemary in the Dvar Moshe, uh, by accident, I found a few weeks ago that he has a website up and stuff that he hasn't published yet. He put up there, it's all PDFs. So uh, he has some stuff about uh, the Seder. He has stuff on all types of stuff. 
So uh, there's an interesting thing about Carpas that he uh, said over here that I want to mention. Here it goes. Okay, I don't see it right now. Oh, here, here it is. Yeah, Rabbeinu Manoach. So I guess this is published in some editions of the Rambam. So, several reasons for eating Karpas. One is it's to remember the Kasonas Pasim. Karpas sounds like Kasonas Pasim. What's Kasonas Pasim? The multicolored coat that Yosef was given by Yaakov, and that was the cause for going down to the Gullus of Mitzrayim. Also, I'm not sure how this is, but he says the Karpas is a symbol of victory in war. Also, that they used to eat Karpas and Mitzrayim as a medicine for their limbs, which were very weakened and tired from the backbreaking work, the Avodas Parach. Oh, it's through the Chida quoting Rabbeinu Menach, but and then there were some other. I didn't fully understand that, but some people were bringing different acronyms. Uh, I guess it was for different. Oh, uh, it was for different. There was a certain. So the Chassam Sofer mentioned from Amaril that Karpas is based on the parach, the, the hard work. I guess sometimes we flip the letters. So I guess even though Karpas is the race before the pay, but parach, pay before the race. And then, so we have it kaf race pay, samach for Karpas, and parach, the kaf is last, then the race, and then the pay. So backwards, uh, the hard work parach becomes karpas. So um, again, there's some hint uh, in the karpas. Uh, it's it reminds us of the hard work. I mean, I was told because we dip it in the salt water and that's our tears. That's what I was taught when I was a little kid. But here's some other reasons, and um, and the the Chasim Sofer quotes his Rebbe, Reb Nelson Adler who tried to figure out why the morale said this. And basically on the vegetable, a certain vegetable that they used was called apia, uh, which seems to be in German was called celery. I assume that's what he means. In Ge German it was called cellar, which I assume is what we call celery. Uh, and it's eaten raw and we dip it in the vinegar. And that's what we, we follow the maril. That's what the Chasim Sofer is saying. And I gave a mnemonic, the Roche Tevos, the beginning of the word, Kamo Kel Paul Yeshua's Ata. That who is like the God who uh, manufactures salvations like you? This we say before Kriyashma. Kel Paul Yeshua's Ata Vanav Chartim Mikalam Velasha. So, um, the, because it was called Apia, Kel Paul Yeshua's Ata, the beginning uh, of each letter represents this celery, which I guess in early Germanic times was called Apia. Uh, also, another pasuk, Yochla Anavim Vispo, 
yeah, uh, the uh, the poor people or the afflicted people should eat and they should be satisfied. Yahalo Hashem Dorshav. Hashem should praise those who search after him. So I'm not sure exactly what all those mnemonics are, but uh, we see certain uh, karpas coming, uh, uh, reminding us of the hard work that we did. Okay, in Manishtana, so famous question is, uh, where's the answer to all the four questions? Where does it say that we, uh, why do we, ex where does it ex tell us why the reason that we dip? Where's the reason? This is on page 88. Um, where does it say the reason that we recline? So answers are given for that. Ramosha many years ago already said that it's one question. What distinguishes this night or how different is this night? From all the other reasons, and and we're saying why it's different because we only eat ham, we only eat matzah, we 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 eat maror tonight, we dip tonight, not just once but twice, and we recline tonight. So, I think to even refine it more, I think it's we could even say that you could say manishtan alayla zemikal lelos is one question. So what makes it? Because it doesn't say lama. Why is this night? It says ma. What makes this night different, or what is it different? So we say right away the fourth ways is different. The, the matzah, the maror, we dip, and we recline. But then, no, we say that avadim hayinu is the answer. So how could those be the answer if, if avadim hayinu is the answer? So uh, avadim hayinu is the why. What made tonight different that we do these four things? And we could say the answer is avadim hayinu. We were slaves and we were free. So because we went out so fast, we could only eat chametz. To remind us of the bitter slavery, we eat the maror. Which, which, uh, and... Free people dip, so we dip. Nowadays, with ketchup, everyone dips. It's now a democratic, and uh, and because we're free and we're royalty, we can recline. Which another thing, though, is is important that uh, uh, the first uh, sicha that I ever heard from Rav Stav at Kermiavna was on the parsha of it was about the uh, Kisisa about the the golden calf. But he gave a really interesting uh, story, which brings out this point. And uh, the the story was they saw they I don't know a genie whatever said to I don't think he mentioned genie, but maybe he did. But I, I he probably didn't. He said they wanted to give someone I want to give you something that you'll always that every day you'll feel really great. What can I give you? So what do you think he'd ask for? You know, a great car, uh, a lot of money. This or that. He says. Give me a pair of shoes that's half a size too small for me. So he said, okay. But then he says, why does that make you feel good? You're, he says, every day when I get home and I take off my shoes, my feet feel so great. So if we only celebrate the freedom without having the maror, we don't necessarily remember what uh, uh, we can't savor and uh, appreciate uh, being free. So if we don't have maror to remind us of the bitterness, we can't fully appreciate the freedom. So in that story, you have to, to have the, the, the two small shoes on when you take it off, you feel so good. So uh, this point, uh, I, so just to recap this, the previous three minutes, some uh, commentators ask, where are the answers to all four questions? Ramosha Salavechik says, no, the, there's one question, Manishtana, and we give four uh, responses to what makes the night different. I'm saying something slightly different. That's, that could be true, but because we also know that Avadi Mayinu is the answer to the question, we have two types of questions, two types of answers to the question. The first question was Ma, what makes this night different? That we eat chametz, we eat maror, we, recline, we dip, and we recline. But what made this, why is tonight different that we do these things? That's Avadim Hayinu. So we can answer the what, we can answer the why is it different that we do the what. Okay, for the four sons, page 90, the Chacham, the Rasha, the Tam, the Shenu, the Elishal. It's important to remember always, not just on Pesach, but everyone's unique, everyone's different. Not, not necessarily any two people are the same. What you could explain to one person 
is not the same as you explain to a different person. Even to Chachamim or two times, you may not be able to explain it to them the same way. And uh, it's important, I think, just to remind everyone, we're not trying to make everyone the same way. Uh, they say, I don't know if it's from the Chafetz Chaim or other people, uh, every Jew's davening together is like a symphony orchestra. If you had a symphony orchestra, just the violins, it wouldn't be very good. Or if it was just, you know, trumpets, it wouldn't be very good. You need the different sections. You need the strings, the horns, the percussions, you know, the the world, the winds, uh, you know, the uh, all the different uh, parts is what makes Klai Yisrael great. So, uh, and, and makes anything great. The, a different uh, mashal that they give is that the king wanted to... Uh, he said, plant me an orchard and I'll reward you. He didn't tell them what he was going to reward them. At the end, that some people who, who, that depending on what type of tree he brought, they planted, he gave them a different amount of money. Uh, so why didn't he tell them in advance? If everyone knew that the high, the, the, let's say a fig tree would be the highest amount of money for the tree, everyone would have planted fig trees. And then he only would have had fig trees. But in order to have the different trees that bloom in different times and they taste different from the fruit and they look different, uh, he wanted a, a, an orchard that wasn't all the same. So it's uh, unfortunate that some of our institutions uh, try to make people uh, all be the same. And that's not uh, what makes anyone, certainly not Klai Yisrael, great. We need people who are strong in Tanakh, people who are strong in 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 uh in uh their their bikim they're experts some people are adept some people are good in this gemara some people are other some people may not be good at learning but they're good at organizing uh uh some people are really good at collecting tzedakah this you need different types of people with different skills you can't make people do the same thing now it's it's certainly valuable to expose people to the different types of things and they can see what they're interested in that's certainly good but to try to funnel everyone to do the same thing uh, is not good. And to say that we have Chacham Rasha, Tam Shenu De Elishal, there's reminds us that there's many different ways that we have to teach. And 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 sometimes this, the kids didn't end up the way we planned to it, but we have to still uh, teach them and deal with them depending on who they are. We can't fit, force them into a particular mold. And if they're not in the mold we want, we can't ignore them either. The drasha, which uh, uh, there's a, a drasha that uh, in I think the Gemara Tainus, maybe it's in Yuma, that any uh, public fast day that doesn't have sinners participating in the fast day is not a good fast. And uh, they learn it out from the Ketores that uh, one of the ingredients of the Ketores is Chalbana, which the translation Galbana, now I know exactly what it is. No, I still don't know it. But they say that chalbana does not smell so good by itself. But when you're mixing up these very nice uh, 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 ingredients to make the frankincense, uh, sometimes you need the the chalbana. Sometimes the the that that makes the everything else better, or sometimes you just need some bad thing by itself. Uh, as a from a cooking perspective, if you're making something sweet, putting in a, a pinch of salt makes it. Uh, Makes it better. Now, I'm not the type who I, I don't think I ever tried putting the uh, the salt on the watermelon, but I've heard of people uh, who did that. So sometimes putting something, you know, so having the rishaim, uh, a rasha or a, a chote, a sinner, in with us to show, you know, if if uh, is important to in the element of tshuva and having a fast day. If we wouldn't let the the sinner in, why should Hashem let us in if we're the sinners also? Um, and sometimes also, this is a, a little bit of a, 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 a bit of a stretch, but sometimes the Russia brings up a point that might be a painful point that we, uh, want to ignore, but sometimes it has to be brought up. So to have the, the, the Seder without the Russia is not the right thing to do. Okay, and page 92, right before the Vahisha Amda. Baruch Shomer Haptachasul Yisrael Baruch Hu. Blessed is he who guarded, his, who kept his covenant or his promise to Yisrael. Blessed is he, because the Holy One, blessed be he, calculated the end to do what he uh, said to Avram Avinu in the covenant of the pieces. 
He said to Avram, you should surely know that your, uh, your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land and they will be slaves and they will be afflicted for 400 years. But the nation that uh, enslaves them, I will judge. And then they will go out with Rechush Gado. Uh, Irish girl here translated as great um, Rechush Gado, the great, the possessions. So who's the Israel in this first line here? Baruch Shem HaPtachosu the Israel. It's the Am Yisrael, the nation of Israel. The Rambam explicitly says in his Haggadah that the text is Baruch Shomer Abtachoso, the Yisrael Amo, blessed is Hashem who kept his covenant to his nation, Yisrael. But what else is the other possibility? The Archashokhan in his Haggadah has a beautiful drush on this, talking about Yaakov. Yaakov's name was also Yisrael. And maybe this is talking Baruch Shomer Abtachoso, the Yisrael. Because even though it's true that later in the paragraph it talks about that Hashem made a covenant to Abraham and he said, go down, your, your descendants will be slaves and I'll bring them up. But he also told the same thing to Yaakov. After uh, ya Yaakov's other sons came back and said that Yosef is alive and he's in Mitzrayim, he wants us to all come. Hashem went, brought Korbanos, and Hashem appeared to Yaakov in the Nevoah and he said, go down and I'll come up with you too. So, Baruch Shem Rabtachosu Yisrael can mean that Hashem uh, uh, Hashem kept his promise to ya Yisrael, i.e. Yaakov. Not the nation Yisrael, but the patriarch Yaakov, whose name was Yisrael. So, I think uh, I'll probably go to the end with this thought, but Yaakov was named Yaakov. Why was he named Yaakov when he was born? He was holding on to Esav's uh, heel. Uh, the Medrash says, well, I mean, that, that's what the Pasuk says. But the Medrash says that he, he he didn't want to have to have the aggravation of getting the firstborn. The, the Vilna Gon goes further in saying he really was the first, uh, he was conceived first. And so really he was uh, the firstborn. But as I think Rashi somewhere else says, if you put a, a stone in a tube, the one you put in first, then you put a second one. Second one has to come out first. But Yaakov was named Yaakov because he came on the heels of Esau and he tried to, to stop Esau, but he couldn't. Why was he called Yisrael? He was grappling in Parshish uh, Vayishlach with the mysterious angel, according to Chazal, was the uh, the sorrow shall Esau. It was with the angel who was the overseer of Esau. And just remember, by the way, in, in Parshish Kedoshim, um, the very famous Ramban, that the difference between how come Eretz Yisrael will spit us out if we don't keep the mitzvot, the Pasuk in Kedoshim, um, I maybe say it's it's either Acharemos or Kedoshim, because it says in both parts, but I think it's in Kedoshim, that if if we sin Eretz Yisrael, Vataki Arsas Yosheva will spit us up, because Eretz Yisrael, all the other nations are controlled by some constellation or some other power. Eretz Yisrael is controlled directly by a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Therefore, if we sin, it's not possible for us to stay in the land. So when we say the sorrow shall Esav, uh, it could partially be understood based on the, the important idea by of the of the Ramban, which I'm mentioning in 30 seconds right now, but it deserves a, a, a share in of itself. So what's the difference between Yaakov as Yaakov and Yaakov as Yisrael? Yaakov as Yaakov was kind of trapped and helpless to make any changes to the situation that happened. But Yisrael, Yaakov is Yisrael, this angel, angelic, whatever, physical, in, in the guise of a, a physical uh, being, uh, was trying to stop uh, Yaakov from doing what he wanted to do. And he fought back, and he and he was able to defeat that, that uh, enemy. And therefore... Hashem said, you're called Yisrael, you grappled with Elohim, it doesn't, or it could be Elohim, it doesn't necessarily mean God, but you, with great powers, and with men, and you were, you were able to defeat them. So Yaakov is, uh, the more passive, he couldn't change it, but Yisrael, it re represents the one who's able to change things. Uh, Rav Yashaber here, in the English, they call it fate and destiny. 
and it's called Kol Dodi Dofe. The, the sound of my beloved is knocking from a Pasuk and Shira Shira. Um, so in the beginning of Kol Dodi Dofe, he discusses the question which was at the Gemara in the first parak of Brachos asked. Moshe was asking to Hashem, why are there tzaddikim who suffer and why are there rishayim who, uh, who prosper? There are several answers to it. But what Rav Yashabir talks about in this is a famous brisker thought. So explain contradictions between a Rambams or between a Gemara and a Rambam. Sometimes uh, Rav Chaim taught that sometimes a certain halacha is said about the halacha itself, but sometimes the halacha is said about what a person has to do. So we call it chefza or gavra. Chefza is on the object, gavra is on the man. An esrog has certain halachas within the esrog itself. Its shape, its color, the pitam, things like that. But you could buy the the, the nicest esrog, but, but you won't, won't fulfill your mitzvah until you shake it. So you the person needs to pick up the 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 arba minim in order to fulfill the mitzvah. So the the uh, the usage of this idea of object versus person is much more fine, uh, fine much finer distinction than what I just gave about the the esrog. But it's it's good enough for for I think to explain uh, uh, an idea from Rabbi Yashaber. So when Rabbi Yashaber was just talking about suffering, he said. If someone is just passive, like an object, then suffering serves no, uh, you suffer and there's nothing you do about it. You just suffer and suffer and suffer. But, uh, but Yadus challenges us to not be the passive object. We have to turn ourselves into a gavra, a person, a person who is able to change and uh, turn the tide, so to speak, of what was happening. So I guess that's why in English they called it fate and destiny. If you're the object, you're just you you suffer whatever fate you suffer. But if you can be uh, the gavra, the person, you can make your own destiny or change your destiny. So that's an important uh, uh, klal uh, principle that Rav Yashaber talks about in this essay called Odi Dofik. So. Just using those terminologies, Yaakov as Yaakov. Now, this isn't we many people have looked and try to find a pattern. When does the Torah call Yaakov Yaakov? When does the Torah call Yaakov Yisrael? It's it's no one's ever found a good uh reason for it. But but this these two ideas that Rav Yashabir talks is Yaakov. Yaakov was was the person who um, he suffered and there was things that he couldn't do. His mother told him to do this and then Asa was going to kill him because of that. This and that, he was a Yaakov. But at a certain point, he was able to become a Yisrael and persevere and change, uh, uh, confront challenges and turn them into advantages. So Baruch Shomer Haftachos or Yisrael, if it means Yaakov, uh, ya uh, Yaakov Avinu and not the Jewish people. So uh, we're saying that Hashem kept his Haftacha to Yisrael. Now, why is this significant for the Seder? What was the turning point of Mitzrayim? What was the turning point of Mitzrayim? Page 94. We cried out to Hashem, the God of our fathers. Hashem heard our cry and saw our affliction, our burden, and our oppression. The drasha is, It was in those many days. The king of Egypt died. And B'nai Yisrael groaned from the word. And they called out to Hashem. And their cry went up to Hashem about their work. And then the next few drashos are also about ways in which they were forced, they were suffered and subjugated. But what was, what was the turning point? They cried out. 
It wasn't a very elaborate cry. They didn't sit down, make a sit in at the uh, at the uh, at the Egyptian uh, port. Right. They didn't go to the port and stop all shipping. They didn't have mass demonstrations. They weren't passive. It wasn't. They, it they wasn't that super active, but it wasn't 100 percent passive. They had to do some action. And that was just calling out to Hashem. Once they cried out to Hashem, then Hashem put the wheels of the salvation uh, uh, in gear. So they didn't do super much. They didn't make mass demonstrations. They wasn't. They didn't do a. Uh, you know, they they didn't uh, uh, run uh, for for uh, for local uh, government or shut down the town hall meetings. But they had to do something. The salvation only started once they acted like Yisrael and that they did something. They weren't going to be suffering to their fate, but they started becoming masters of their own destiny by calling out to Hashem. They didn't do much, but that was the catalyst. That's so that's the, we're, we're again we're focusing that Shomer Haftachas of Yisrael is the Yisrael who took an active part to to uh, to stand up for himself. So what are just some other I want to mention I I was thinking it mentioned some some uh who are some famous people who we uh remember because they were they uh took action even if it looked hopeless Nachsho ben Aminada The seventh night of Pesach when uh, we know was when they crossed the Yam, the Yamsuf the the Yamsuf was in front of them Hash, where could they go? Nachman says, Hashem said, I'm going to go. And because Nachman went up to his neck in the water, the water split. Uh, in Parshas Bamidbar, when Moshe had to, was commanded to count the Levium, the difference between counting the Levium and the regular Jews was that the regular Jews were counted from the age of 18. So they were able to come to the census, Lahavdal, the draft board. But the Levium were counted from the age of 30 days. So how do you go? You have to go to the tents and see if there's any babies. But Moshe says, it's not the sneest thing. If there's a nursing mother, this or that, I can't go into the tent. So Hashem said, You have to do it. You have to do it. I'll do what I have to do. So Moshe just went outside the tent. And Chazal say, a bas call, a heavenly voice came out and said, there are three Levium in this tent. Moshe had to do something. Hashem did the rest. But there's the it's an element of Yisrael. You have to do something and Hashem will help the rest of the way. It's Rabbi Eugen. Larry heard this, I'm sure, from him. Uh, you do your best, then God will do the rest. Rabbi Eugen said something along those lines. Pinchas. When when uh, this rebellion against Moshe with the uh, Midianite women or the Moabite women, Nach, Nach, uh, uh, Pinchas remembered that Moshe Rabbeinu taught them Habal Aramis Kanoi and Pogenbo. The zealots are able to take immediate action. And uh, so he remembered, he got rewarded with Bris Shalom. Shimshon, who was not the most successful shofate in the, in the, of the shoftim of the judges, when he was, uh, they tied him up, they were partying around him. He said, Davin Tashem, Give me strength to pull down these pillars, and I'll die. But I'm going to kill tens of thousands of uh, of these plishtim. So it's not the uh, the lechachila, the thing that we want to do. But he he prayed for action, and Hashem granted him that strength. And we remember Shimshon for that uh, particular action. Esther. And then, uh, slightly later in history, I don't think we know anyone's names. But the fact that the uh, a big stand was taken at Masada, we don't remember the names. But the fact that we know that that there was rebellion and they fought till they couldn't fight anymore is something that uh, we know. Probably not from religious sources, but it's something we know. So these people refused to uh, go down passively. 
So these are examples of people acting as a Yisrael, becoming masters of their own destiny. Sometimes you're not successful. Shimshon died in the process, which he knew he would, but still there's an element of, of, uh, of becoming a master of your own uh, destiny. Would you say Esther also, Esther? Yeah, you could say Esther. But Esther, though, she had to be prodded uh, and convinced by Mordechai. Okay. She didn't want, I mean, in the end, she did, but yeah. she, she didn't seize the it initiative. It didn't come from her. her. Right, but yes, she did. She did become a, one of these Yisrael-esque figures at the prodding of Mordechai. Thank you. So with this, I think we could explain a different famous question. Whose name is not in the Haggadah? Moshe's name is not in the Haggadah. So there are many reasons given. But Moshe. with this uh, idea that we were talking about, the Yisrael personality, I think we could give a, an explanation why Moshe is not in the Haggadah. We mentioned that the B'nai Yisrael had to become a Yisrael to a certain level, a certain degree, and it wasn't until they um, called out to Hashem that Hashem start the process of the redemption. But of everyone in Mitzrayim, who did the most? Obviously, Moshe did a tremendous amount. Aaron did stuff, but why, why did Aaron do it? Moshe told him to do it, and he listened. And obviously, a lot of the stuff that Moshe did, obviously, was commanded by Hashem, but Moshe, according to different Midrashim, he saw, well, according to the Chumash, he saw uh, the Egyptian uh, um, being especially... Uh, cruel to the Jew, and he killed the Mitzri. Uh, Moshe was, seems from what we know, was the most active um, dissident, I guess, uh, in Mitzrayim. Moshe did more to agitate, and when he first went to Paro again with under Hashem's instructions, then it, at first it became worse for the Jews because the Jews had to find their, besides for making their daily quota of bricks, they also had to find their own uh, materials at that point. And Moshe was discouraged. He said, Hashem, you made it bad. You made it worse. La Mariosa. And, uh, but Moshe, un un unlike anyone else we know about, Moshe did a, did a lot. So we don't want to mention Moshe because even though it's not to it's not to to minimize Moshe, but again, because we have to maximize, and this is an idea that many say, we have to maximize that it was Hashem by himself. This is uh and still on page 94. Hashem took us out of Mitzrayim, not through an angel, not through a seraf, not through an agent, but a Kaddish Baruch Hu in his honor and by himself. So it's true he had Moshe do some stuff, but Hashem was the one who took us out. Uh, and even though we couldn't be Yaakov's, we had to be Yisrael's. So the fact that we called out to Hashem, that was enough to make Hashem redeem us. But Hashem redeemed us. It's true he had Moshe do some things, but whatever reason Hashem wanted it to happen, Hashem could have done it without Moshe. So we don't want to mention Moshe because Moshe was more of a Yisrael personality and it's and I, again, I, I keep mentioning, because it's true, B'nai Yisrael wouldn't have been redeemed without their little bit of calling out in pain to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. When they thought that the king would die, they thought things would get better. Just this king is the mean king. The next king won't be so mean to us. And they were wrong, so they cried, called out to Hashem. But, but, uh, but we have to emphasize that has, there's nothing that we did made us free other than calling out to Hashem. Hashem did everything. The stuff that Moshe did... Hashem made us free, not because of Moshe, the, the miracles were necessary for the, Mitzrayim, for the Mitzrayim to know, for the Jews to know, but Hashem freed us. So, and then a similar thing, uh, again, with this uh, idea of being a passive Yaakov versus being an active Yisrael, at the bottom of page 90, Originally, our ancestors were idol worshippers, but now uh, uh, Hashem brought us near to his service. I'm not an expert in this, but I think that from the pagan uh, practices, 
they did all types of things in order to not, they, they thought, you know, if they didn't do a certain thing, this God would be mad at them and it wouldn't rain and they'd die of famine. If they wouldn't uh, offer their kids as sacrifices, the, this other God is going to be mad at them. So it could be that uh, some of the idolatrous practices and worships were based on being completely passive. We have no, there's nothing we could do about it. So we have to do all these crazy, well, to us, they sound crazy. We have to do all these different things in order to not let the gods be mad at us and bring bad things to us. We were scared of what the gods do. We did all these crazy things to make them not mad. But but now Hashem brought us close to his service. We're not passive. We could call out to Hashem. We could bring offerings to Hashem. Also, the idea of, uh, with the way I explained, which you know may not be 100% correct, but the fear of what the idols would do, uh, that's serving out of fear. The idea of the the innovation, the Chiddush of, of uh, the Torah and the serving Hashem is that I think that there's an element of Ava, serving out of love, that probably didn't exist before. You didn't worship the water God because you love the water God. You worship the water God because you didn't want him to flood the earth and knock your house down and have a tsunami and this and that. So that could be one other reason of the Mitchila of Deva Rosara is the passive Yaakov uh, uh, situation. But Akshav Kivana Makal Nabaraso, we are Yisrael. We are masters of our own destiny. Sometimes we might daven and Hashem might answer us no, but we have the ability to daven. Now that's a completely separate, not just one share, but what's the, the purpose of tefillah. The purpose of tefillah is not, uh, according to most opinions, not for us to convince Hashem to change uh, his mind about anything. But the uh, uh, this idea about the Yaakov personality versus the Yisrael might be uh, uh, to give us an explanation of mitchila of the Avodah also. So... Um, those are the thoughts I wanted to share this year. If anyone has any questions, a couple minutes, I guess, a minute to answer questions.